Kitty. How are you? I'm very well, Terry. How are you? I am wonderful, and I'm thrilled to see you, first of all. It's been a long time, and yeah. thank you so much for being willing to be interviewed for this Choose Courage movement. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Wonderful. Me too. And uh, first of all, it, tell our audience a little bit about you. Well, I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I've been a counselor, counselor educator uh, for oh, over 25 years now and a life coach for about five, six years now. Um, and also I've returned to teaching uh, graduate students becoming counselors. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. I know you have a lot of wisdom and I know that you have uh, endured some of your own challenges in life and you're one of the most yes. positive people I know and uh, so I want would love to ask you my very first question right off the bat sure go for it all right do you see yourself as courageous um I never thought of myself particularly as courageous but uh, most definitely I do now um yeah, I've been living with multiple sclerosis for realistically probably 30 years unofficially and officially probably for about 15 to 20 years. Mm. Um, and over the last five to six years, my health has definitely changed and the amount of courage it takes to just to live in my body every day is huge. Yes, I'm sure it's huge, Kitty. Yeah. And so describe for us in the audience, you know, what your definition of courage and how it's helped you manage this? Courage, um, if I had to describe it, I would say that it is reaching within myself for the strength within my highest self and calling upon that to live each moment of the day each, there are so many moments of the day that require courage. Um, things that you don't even think about, getting up out of your chair, getting on and off the toilet um, that require courage. So I'm called upon to really dig down within myself and live from the very essential strength that I've got and to not give up. Yes, yes. And that's, digging inside some something yeah. inside of you um, that knows that you can get through this or get through that moment or that day or that activity. It is both within myself as well as I think aligned with something much higher than myself. Yeah. yeah. So it's the, it's living in alignment with that creates a channel for courage to flow. Yes. Yes. And what does that feel like when that's happening? Um, it feels sustaining. Um, and many times I feel relieved because if, um, I thought I was fully doing this by myself, I think I would have given up a long time ago. So I feel bolstered and supported both by that energy that's bigger than myself, as well as, um, by incredible friends and my very wonderful partner who's stood by me for 20 years. So, wow. Wow. It's yeah. incredible. Kitty, so what can people learn from this in their own life, from you and what you're dealing with now, what you've been dealing with, and how you've used the courage within and also um, knowing that there's something bigger than yourself that's also you can tap into to help you with the strength and uh, to not give up and to stay positive? Well, staying positive is, is not always, it's tricky. It's very hard sometimes. But um, I think that, that what I would encourage folks is to look within themselves beyond the story, beyond the mm -hmm. story of struggle, the story of suffering, the story of strife, whatever story has been capturing your attention to transcend that story and go within yourself to tap into something that you might not have even thought you had or you felt very disconnected from and to begin to, to grow that flame, to recognize that flame is a lot bigger than you realize and uh, to call upon the help of 
something larger than yourself as well as your supports in your life. And to, um, I've definitely learned that change is very difficult. And so sometimes the most micro of movements find the victory in that and find the strength in that and recognize um, your courage, even within the smallest momentary, just the tiniest of changes that you might make that there's that takes courage. Yeah, that's such yeah. a good point, Kitty, because I think people misunderstand what courage is. I think it must be this big, huge yeah. thing that you have to overcome. And, 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 you know, what if it's, yeah. you know, you did just a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Today. Um, and, you know, the other thing I find that's really helpful sometimes when things are really difficult is to vision what I would like it to be. I mean, this is as simple as literally getting out of my wheelchair into a chair is a vision how I desire that to look. And then even if it takes me a half an hour to do it, just keep plugging away at it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and not give up. And when I fall, which I do, um, I, you know, part of courage is getting creative and getting adaptive and finding different ways of doing things. And, um, and finding success and, and, and getting at what you're desiring in a different way than you might have anticipated. Okay. Yeah. There's just so many golden um, nuggets that you just threw out. Thank so you, many. Sir. I mean, I want to like just uh, take after reread, you know, look at our video again and mm -hmm. I, I will, I'll try to throw some of these out to our audience um, and, and write them down sure. because they're all amazing and things that I really haven't even thought of just um, you know, that, that, that courage is creative and that we have to yeah. been doing that kind of, even with the COVID thing, that's just uh, oh, yeah. creating our new environment and a way of doing things and not giving up because we can't do it this yes. way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Find a different way to do it. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And, and the victory, I love that too. Just finding the victory and in, in the small things that we're able to accomplish. Yeah. I mean, if you're really struggling and it's very difficult for you to even get out of bed, then getting out of bed, taking a shower and brushing your teeth, celebrate that making your bed, celebrate that yes. and, and really take big goals into really small, small, small steps so and beautiful and really recognize the courage within each moment. I, I feel very uh, emotional of what you just said. I mean, finding the courage in the little things. Yeah. And um, and every moment we can find it. We can, we just have to look and recognize it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's there and it's there within you always. Yes. It really is. And you don't have to, you, it's been there. It's been there your whole life. Um, and you, you deserve all the support and resources you can possibly access. Wow. You know, you are an inspiration to me and I know to so many other people and you, you know, I know that we will find our courage just by listening to what you are doing and what you have found in your own life. And I was going to move on to the second question and, um, you know, I might rearrange that question a bit <laughs> sure. um, because I think you are choosing the, the question is, if you could choose courage over fear or doubt, you know, what would you do? <laughs> I think you're doing it. I think that what you just explained to us and, and maybe you can expand on that, but sure. I think you absolutely are choosing courage over fear or doubt. And within my, within my day, I live with all three. Um, there's so much risk in everything I do. I mean, I keep talking about simple things like transfers because there's, there's danger in that, there's risk in that. And um, it, it's, there are, there are these moments when I'm literally trying to get from my chair to my wheelchair, when there's, it's as though you are somebody who's, who's doing a high wire act and you have to let go. Yeah. There's a time and a space when I have to let go of the security of my chair to reach for my wheelchair. And in that space, there is absolute fear and doubt. And if I don't choose courage, and if I stay with fear and doubt, 
um, there's a great chance that I can fall. And, uh, and that's very real. And when I fall, it, um, it's, it's dangerous and, and it's risky. So yeah. that space, whenever you're, you're in your life and, and you're within that space, when you are even taking a large step or a small step, you live with fear and doubt and courage simultaneously. And, and it's, it is when you're doing a high wire act, it is, it is choosing to, to, you know, kind of transition into that space and grab a hold of courage. And that is what will connect you to the bar on the other side. Um, and so it's real and it's, it's terrifying. Um, and so I don't discount that they're there. I live with fear and doubt. Yes. But I also try and say, all right, um, it, it's, it's like Liz Gilbert with her letter to dear, dear, dearest fear. <laughs> I know they're there and I recognize them and I thank them because what they are teaching me to do is to be smart about my choices. And the parts of me that do experience doubt and fear are not there to put me down or to help me fail. I've learned that they are there to teach me to be smart and to be cautious and to be strategically wise. So when I take that risk and I leave the comfort and security of my chair and risk getting into my wheelchair, I, I'm relying on the fear and doubt to, I'm using them to keep me smart. And then it's courage that literally gets me to let go of and get into the chair. So frankly, I'm grateful to fear and doubt and courage because all three have gotten me from point A to point B. But I put them, I recognize their place yes. and I honor them for the role they serve. And I don't give them a role that they, um, I choose them not to have. They don't run my life. They are like an advisor and a guide. This is um, so good, Kitty. <laughs> so good. I have never Thank looked at did. it that way. I mean, I have in some fashion, but to see that, you know, to, to actually honor them for their role that you yeah. want them to play. Well, and fear and doubt are part of a part of me that, that, doesn't want to see me get hurt, literally. Yes. I mean, and figuratively. They, it's not that there's this part that's trying to beat up on myself or put me down. It's fear and doubt are, are from a part of me that doesn't want to see me get hurt. And, I, and I'm grateful for that because I don't want to get hurt either. So, yes, yeah, so they can be our friend if we yeah. let them play the role that we yeah. want and don't let them play the role that we don't want. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's like Liz Gilbert, you, you know, you're in the journey, you're in the car, but you're not going to drive, you're not even going to change the radio. You know? So, <laughs> so fear and doubt are going to help, yeah. they're going to guide, but it will be courage that will actually get me to leave so um, from one seat to the other. And frankly, I mean, my world used to be much bigger, used to be much grander, I could move around much more easily. But now, I mean, when getting up out of one chair into another, like it kind of puts things into perspective. <laughs> so I get these micro lessons, like I'm fear sure. and courage and doubt are lived out in literally six inches. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. So take that lesson and take yeah. that lesson and use it for really big things too. This is the most beautiful lesson. And I'm I can't. I can't tell you how incredible these lessons are and for everyone to take. I mean, it's really kind of embracing all of it, but what I'm taking from what you just explained, what you're living every day with fear, doubt, and courage is that they can help you, but yeah. just use them in the right order and in the right way, yeah. but that courage in the end will get you to that other side. Yeah. Um, and if you question, yeah. In between, um, in that process, I'm going down. Thing, you've got to really commit to it. Like yeah. I got to commit to this. Use be yeah. wise. Use my yeah. fear and doubt, but then commit to my courage to to really yeah. take me in a place I'm not 100% sure of. 
And if fear and doubt were to run my life, and they did, frankly, I spent a year, I think, being letting fear and doubt run my life. And that was a very miserable year. I was, I was depressed. I was angry. I was extremely angry. And I didn't do anything. I didn't, I literally just sat in my chair and watched TV most of the time. So if fear and doubt, if I put them in the driver's seat, if I put that part of me that doesn't want to see me get hurt, I will literally go nowhere. So I learned from that, that fear and doubt don't get to be in the driver's seat, that, that I'm in the driver's seat and I, I rely on them. I'm grateful for that part of me that wants to protect me, but that part doesn't get to drive anymore. Cause I, I mean, I lost a year. Yeah. So. Whole year. Yeah. Oh, Kitty, yeah. this is just remarkable information. And I know our audience is going to take this and I hope we hear from the audience after this interview and how this has shifted for them from what, what they're learning from you so that they don't lose out either. Yeah. Um, and letting fear and doubt be in the driver's seat. Um, so it's just putting them in the right place. Um, and I love the car analogy. I love all your analogies. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, you can thank Liz Gilbert for that one. Okay. <laughs> all right. I love it. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna. I'm gonna definitely read her information one more time because that's big, big magic that came from big magic. Big magic. Okay. Yeah. Good. And, and yeah, her, you know, and, and if. If folks out who are working with you right now, you know, I'd invite them to really have them reflect on where fear and doubt is in their life and and what is that part? And it was wonderful to connect with that part and realize that part's not out to harm me, that part is is out to help me. And so if they can connect with the part of them and the parts of them that are fear and doubtful, but also to, to assess whether that part where, what role is that part playing in their life? And if it's if it's in the driver's seat, they may want to consider sticking it in the back. Yeah, <laughs> I love maybe this a, new perspective. Maybe in one of those vehicles that has like seats in the way, 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 way. Yeah, way with back. really good seatbelts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and strap you know, them in. Tape on their mouth if you need to. Yeah. So I love this perspective and this analogy. And I know that um, this is a really great thing for us to be looking at that, you know, it's because what you can't, if we're looking at, we can't deal with them or they can't be a part of our life, then they're going to control our life. Yeah. So um, just put them in their right place. So thank you so much, Kitty, for this. Thank you, Terry. And um, we look forward to um, hearing more from you because you have so much wisdom. Thank you for being um, a, a beacon of light for us. Um, and Thank you, Terry. Yeah. Thank you for the work you are doing. You're Thank welcome. Thank you. You are a beacon to so many, I have no doubt. Thank you so much, Kitty. And um, we will be in touch. And thank you for sharing your story with us today and your wisdom. You're welcome. Thank All right. you. All right. Take care. Have a great day. All right. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.